Alright guys, it's Trice here, and what you're seeing right now is a massive moving truck body. To be specific, I'm going to be building this truck to have the most torque as possible, along with designing a livery for this bad boy and designing the truck in general. I already made the engine which I'm going to use, or try to use, in my automation engine series videos if you want to check those out. So for the panel material of this truck, which pretty much go like any other 80s trucks would have, so let's do steel panel material with the chassis, Purdue ladder chassis with the chassis material, might as well, for the sake of cost everything, regular steel. And with the front engine placement will be a front longitudinal, and the front suspension's pretty much obvious. Use coils up front and the rear a leaf suspension, because, well, we need the max load capacity as possible if you want to haul, like, whatever you want inside this here vehicle. And for the engine, let's see what we can fit in. Let's start off with something kind of big. Let's do the V10, which has 4,600 pounds feet of torque. Can this fit? So, uh, oh, we got plenty, but... 69 fill, nice number. So we got plenty of room to go. Let's try out a V12. We want to go, like, all out in this bad boy. So how will a V12 do with 5,600 pounds feet of torque? Let's see, go back to engine variant, and... Ooh, it's getting a little bit big up in here. Let's see. I doubt a V16 will do. Where's the V16? 47... 7,400 pounds feet of torque, putting it in 75... It don't. Oh, it sucks. So put the V12 back in, we'll design the rest of the vehicle, and head on to the actual design phase. So V12 we go. And for the heck of it, let's do a quick test with this engine right here. So let's give you here what this engine sounds like right now. Despite being at 99% stress for the pistons and car rods up in here, it don't matter one bit for this engine because, well, now it's showing 100%, but it runs just as fine in automation and will kind of do the same thing to an extent in BMG Drive. So for the rest of this vehicle, quick for the drive type, let's do a longitudinal 4x4 setup with a manual 5 speed with the top speed set. We can crank this bad boy, dude. 239. Let's do pretty much 235 miles an hour. It's a freaking super moving truck up in here. Better than a damn supercar back in the day, right? For the tires, we're doing some radio. Let's, let's make things a little bit interesting. Radio utility tires with the front and rear tire width. Maybe widen this to a 325 up front. And the rear kept at 395 millimeters for the back. And a brake, since we need to stop on a dime. Max Vent of uh, Venetus 3 piston. And with the size set, do 420 for the front and 420 in the back, because we need to stop this bad boy because of how heavy it is. Pad type, same thing at 100. So under tray, do semi clad with the brake airflow at a 15, which is pretty much realistic for most cars in this game. The interior, do standard with a, a cassette player. Uh, a standard A track will do. And the safety and all that good stuff, we'll use some regular hydraulic power steering, no traction aids, and 1970s standard safety standards. And finally, for the suspension, we're going to be using, uh, let's do air springs, 22 damage passive sway bars, and let's start off with normal uh, preset, let's see. We're understeering quite a bit, which is kind of important at driving at high speeds, especially when the car goes shifty shafty up in here, folks. Might as well just do utility for the heck of it, and now we're we'll gonna low capacity. If we can hold uh, 29,000 pounds, almost 30,000 pounds up in here, it's like a full-size truck or something with the towing capacity. That's great. And it complains about the brakes. I can see why. Let's see. Doesn't do much. All right, baby, final adjustments for the front and rear brake force. 144 in the rear, 95% of the front. So I believe we're all good to go with this car. I'll make some final changes while designing this here vehicle. So let's go back to the fixtures tab and get ready to design this here moving truck with not only a design of the vehicle like the headlights and all that good stuff, but with an actual livery, which I could try to do that with this here truck. So get ready to design this here bad boy right now. So for the design of this moving truck, the front of the vehicle is original and distinctive from my other designs using this mod body, like my stereotypical lifted SEMA pickup truck which I made a long time ago. The designing process took me about 2 hours to complete which isn't that bad for me as I'm a slow builder in this game. 
The headlight and grille placement is inspired by the 1980s Ford Econoline vans. It took me a while to make it distinctive from the Econoline without making a carbon copy version of it. I then began to work on the side view mirrors which there aren't a whole lot to choose from that fits this body. I also added front and rear bumpers, some side steps, and daytime running lights in the top portion of the van for the front and back. What sucks about this mod body is that the UV mapping isn't great when applying fixtures to the van, so I had to cover it using some patchwork fixtures to hide the transparent lines and gaps so it's not an eyesore to look at. That took me about 45 minutes to get every nook and crack patched. I then began to work on the livery which took me like 30 minutes to do so. I decided to make a knockoff company to the U-Haul called the We Heave. I implemented the logo on the van, including the slogans and advertising text in the back sliding door. So after getting everything done with this van, here's what it came out, which you can barely see due to the game's given cinematic shots. This is the 1982 Drake V6000 We Heave Edition, an 8.8 meter moving truck with a massive and powerful V12 engine, with a manual transmission, 15 ton load capacity, air conditioning, best in class power, and many more. You can rent this amazing van for as low as $9.85 per day. If only this existed in real life. Alright, so I finally got this here movie truck all set and done. This took me a while with the livery design, especially with the back end, the main logo for the sides, the front, everything. That pretty much took me the most time to actually think of something and actually put it on the top of the vehicle and especially with the advertising stuff on the back. So real quickly before we jump into BeamNG Drive, what are the lap times like by driving around on automation and the airfield test track, which is basically the top gear test track? I'm gonna get the times only, I don't care about driving around the entirety of this track here. So for the automation test track, we're gonna get a, oh wow, 3 minutes 17 seconds, 18 milliseconds. That's pretty meager, that sounds like a... <laughs> Like a slow ass car would pretty much perform around that time, and in the airfield test track, 1 minute, 59 seconds, 54 milliseconds, almost 2 minutes exactly. And now I add, if you look at here, the top speed, um, the top speed shows 153 miles per hour, but I do have it set to 234 of an estimated top speed of 242, almost 243. Are you kidding me, man? So before we jump into BMG Drive, despite all these problems in here, which I'll list right here, such as wheel spin issues, quality issues, understeering, front or rear dampers being too hard, clearance issues, high torque load, engine being running too rich, and the rear tires being quite wide, let's jump into BMG Drive to see how this knockoff U-Haul truck will perform on the road. So here we are at the bottom map of Rowan County, Tennessee. You need a beefy computer to load this here big ass map. So taking a brief look at this vehicle here, I mean, looking way back, it kind of sucks that the textures of the text is kind of janky up in here unless you zoom way in for the rear of the vehicle. How about the sides? Kind of the same thing. Like if you zoom kind of like way out, it kind of looks like a fuzzy vest with the slogan right up here for the side slogan and the main slogan up front of the vehicle. Yeah, that's my only main complaints with this here vehicle, so let's get ready to line myself to the road here to start our cool and overheating base performance test. I think I might have to shut off the thermals for this vehicle, let's find out. So hopefully this vehicle will cooperate, so for our base performance test, we're gonna start with the 0-62 to acceleration test, followed by the 62-0 to brake test, and finally, a top speed run with this here vehicle. So get ready for the 0-60 to test in 3, 2, 1, go. Damn, that freaking temperature gauge went way up and way down. 0 to 62, technically 63 at 3.24 seconds of 157.66 feet. So we're at 62 miles an hour exactly. Hit the brakes now. No ABS, but we're doing okay. 62 to 0 in 3.48 seconds of 144.30 feet. So... <laughs> Brake test and 0 to 60 test are almost about the same, but for the brake test, we got a little bit more time, but less distance. But with the 0 to 62, we got less time, but more distance. It's pretty interesting. You hit me, dude. So for a top speed run already in effect, we're gonna get a worse 0 to 62 as turbocharger is overheating. Let's see if we can actually stay with me, says Smab Smith. Well, it took two vehicles, but not more than one. And just starve your mother. You know, let's take this out to a highway. I'm on the highway right now. Pistons ring damage, engine torque reduced. So we're flying through the gears here and we got more traffic. And unfortunately, we're not going to get the top speed of 230 miles an hour. And we're 
Cool overheating, we're dead. Let's just crash the vehicle right here as so, camera as is. Well, unfortunately, the engine had blew itself up, and subcar is honking its damn horn. Shut up, brother. Is it that guy up there, or him? This car, the freaking sunburst. Since I got a tow hitch, let's go to the automation test track to do some pull tests and maybe do a short time trial run. So let's go to test track right now. Okay, for this here pull test, I do got the fifth wheel dolly set up with this here vehicle that's kind of like in a janky manner, just set up with the rear tow hitch of the vehicle, and with this here load that I'm doing here for this trailer, I got myself, I think this is 16,800 kilograms worth of steel, or maybe wood planks. So for the grade test, we're gonna start with the 8% grade, and then if that passes, jump to the 50% grade, then the 25% grade, and 33% grade by doing all these here pull tests, and try to get a time trial thrown in here with this video. So start with the 8% test right now, so get ready to accelerate. Maybe I can, I'm too cocky. Alright, cool over here, oh here we go, we just need a, uh, <laughs> we just need a little, like, head start going here. Maybe lock the differentials. Or, go. Damn it, I'm about to bowl the engine, so go to low range, and first of all, first of all, cool the engine. Let's just screw it, do our test, let's just upshift, second gear, high clutch temperature, uh, kiss my ass. All right, head gaskets are blown. I don't think we're gonna do this for long. If not, we'll just jump to 33% if this keeps blowing the damn engine apart. I'm not gonna go in and edit the thermos, disable them, to make the engine invincible from heat damage. Engine oil critically low. I'm trying to get to the 15 mark. Let's back this boy up even more. So for the 15% test, I don't know if it has to do with the damage of the vehicle or my freaking jank ass placement with the fifth wheel dolly to the back of the vehicle and everything, but we're not going anywhere. So kids, if you want to tow 16,000 kilograms of wooden planks, despite having a 15 ton load capacity, don't even do it kids. It's, it's not gonna work out. So let's stay in this map here and do a quick time trial run before we end off the video. So here we are, way back here, this here straightaway, pretty much the straightaway where you pretty much wreck yourself out this here corner, which I forgot what it's called, Castle's Corner or something like that. So we're gonna be doing one whole lap with a rolling start on the automation old test circuit that we're gonna be doing here. It's just one lap with a rolling start because we can see here, we're way back here behind the start and finish line, we just straight ahead. So let's get ready to start off this here time trial and ready, go. Here we go, accelerating. God damn. That wheel spin. And turbocharge overheating, so it's break at the harder marker. Which normally break at the harder marker. That's where you start to break and slow down, but we didn't do so right there, folks. Alright, 150. Please. Oh, that's a start and finish line right there. I never raced at the old circuit at Yo! Understeering. I know the understeering is good for high speed runs, but I was wrong with the capabilities of this vehicle to begin with. Damn. We about tipped over. Oh my god. Piss and rings damage. Two wheel. It's been at Corp 3 Double Edition Remix. The radiator leaking edition. So now we got the radiator leaking. Let's just try to drive as we keep on two wheel. Damn, I should have probably ooh, stiffened the sway bars quite a bit. Please turn, please. All right, how would a bank corner do? Like I said, I've never done this. So bank corner, around 30-something miles an hour, 37 roughly, and we did just as fine as the engine locked up. I think I should have done engine thermals to just set to false. Is this the final checkpoint way in the distance? God damn it. One more time. No, don't please, don't please. Jesus, thank God for that tire barrier right there, the whole wall for saving my life. So the engine hasn't exploded just as yet, so we're getting a much better lap time, but I... I'm gonna flip this over yet again. Please turn and please don't flip over. I just want this year's straightaway to finish this time trial off. All right, we got the straightaway just ahead. The final lap time, one minute, 27 seconds, 357 milliseconds of a total time of right there. And we killed the damn engine after hitting these tire bears. I thought the slow-mo would kick in earlier, but whatever. Go to free roam. And yep, there is the vehicle as so as I have us at 90% strength, Jesus. So look at this year vehicle. <laughs> For a tire barrier hit at like, what, what, 110, 150 miles an hour? This is not even close to what it would do in real life. It would mash those tire barriers, probably hit this wall and do some damage, but not this type of damage. So for the final part of the video, let's jump on down to Car Jump Arena to see if this knockoff U-Haul truck will compete with the rest of the moving van thingamajig market. So take it atop of the ramp right now. 
So here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena with the freaking Wii He van. So we got the two light, the three light, a four light, and get ready for the fifth light and get ready to accelerate with this here van right now. Accelerate. Here's the van. Wherever you move goes Wii Heave and flying through the first gear. Horrible 0 to 62 time compared to what we got at Rowan County, Tennessee, which is the first map I tried out on. Top speed at the bottom. 198 miles per hour, so way better than we got in automation with the graph that it was shown to us. And let's see here, it slowed us down, doing 8 times somewhat at the 5. So close to 500 markers, so maybe at the 495 marker. So we're upside down, we're gonna stay upside down, and we're gonna flip upright, and we're gonna keep on flipping into the pool, and over the pool, and right wedge up the top of the wall here, so... Not that bad of a landing, not so chaotic like most vehicles are. You just go like tumble, flip, 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 flippity, flippity do, and then land into the pool or land far away from the pool. So look at this vehicle. Well, it sucks our freaking advertising description thing's been destroyed, including our logo. This here uh, slogan, the front logo and slogan's destroyed. And look at that. We got the engine. We got the freaking engine poking straight out of the hood up in here, even though the engine does run just as fine like... Why? So for the final part of the video as I accelerate to our freaking destruction, let's just get like a fast, fast ass crash just going. So try this again, try to build some speed as much as possible. All right, much better. We're still flooring it. Pisses rings damage, I don't even care. So let's jump on to this curb here and crash ourselves a little bit off center to the final bridge pillar to get a high speed crash just going. I doubt it's not gonna really be much. So it's, it's gonna be like a weird overlapping crash right down down like almost to center, so an off-centered, overlapping crash. Here is the vehicle, here goes the beer, here goes the engine, and the rest of the vehicle was so. So let's do 16 times. The engine's trying to get loose up in here, but unfortunately it can't because it's still attached to the vehicle somehow with some black magic of J-beam editing and everything, or just how J-beams work. And there goes a tire, another tire, and is this gonna go over the bridge? It freaking did. That's been a long time since on our freaking four wheels, so it's been a long time since I literally went overboard on a bridge. Normally I just stay within the pillar or just like go down a little ways, but never off the bridge. It's been a long time. So final look, where's the engine? Uh, right here, here's the engine. Can I get this free a little bit so we can see the engine? I mean, is it? I think it's seen it was a little bit deformed, right? Oh boy, damn, that engine is deformed. We got this turbocharger destroyed, the drive shaft, and I believe another part of turbocharger destroyed, so... Two to four turbos are okay, and the rest of the vehicle, well, you can see here, we heaved, more like, we deaved. So that'll do it of automation and beaming G drive with the Drake V6000 We Heave Edition. For a moving truck that's inspired by the 80s Econoline vans, I'd say it doesn't look too bad. Even though the styling isn't a priority for making large utility vehicles. For the engine, despite making over 5,700 pounds feet of torque, it was quite disappointing with the pull test, but kind of expected. Especially of how the engine overheats like crazy, even though the engine airflow and automation was maxed out. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future, and also to check out my social medias down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.